Hey everybody, Dwolf666 here. Welcome to part one of my October 1st double horror movie collection update. We have got the Magic Sword down here and the Phantom Ship right here as well. So, just gonna get right into it, guys. Happy October. Got some flashers here. This first one here is Sorority House. This is fairly recent, 2016. Pretty bad, honestly. Like, not really my thing. Uh, most new slashers that are like this, I just, they don't work for me. There's no flow. I, I don't know. There's, there's absolutely zero plot. They make really goofy 80s slashers look good, so sorority house. If that's your thing, go for it, but it's not really my thing. Okay, next up we have Initiation from 2021. This is actually brand new. This was pretty cool. This is a new slasher that I kind of liked. Didn't like leave me feeling like, oh, that's one of my new favorite slashers, but still some cool kills, you know, didn't really like uh, the way the acting, you know, the, I, I don't know, it's just a little too modern for me, I guess. Mm. Uh, still not bad effort, like I said, the kills are cool. Plot, plot twist is all right. Then we have RSVP, this is some video rental store stuff from like 2002, I think. I believe 2002, but I could be wrong. This is kind of like an anti-slasher. It kind of does things backwards, lets you know what's going on from the get-go, and uh, I don't know. It's a little dry if you don't really know how to take it, but it wasn't terrible. It is what it is. All right, next up we have Final Days of Planet Earth with uh, Daryl Hannah. This is like a sci-fi miniseries. I think they did it in two parts. It's like a giant space cockroach alien sort of Armageddon sort of thing. It's really, really cheesy. It's not very good, but I had fun with it. And from 2000... When did this one come out? 2002 as well. This is a uh, Gacy. This is kind of like a dramatization biopic sort of thing of uh, John Wayne Gacy. Uh, I didn't mind it. It's actually a lot better than I figured it was going to be. Um, yeah, if you're, if you're into serial killers, I think this was a pretty damn good one. Got some trash right here. Uh, Kukui, the boogeyman. This one honestly wasn't so bad. The monster's pretty cool looking, but it's just definitely a really cheap, cheesy good time. This is, you know, something I've found at a dollar store recently. More Dollar Tree fair. Uh, we have Coven from 2019, a couple years old. This is really, really bad. There's a shitload of nudity in it, and that's really cool, but like, Otherwise, it's pretty damn bad. Like, definitely one of the worst I've seen from Uncorked. And usually I really, really enjoy their films. This one fell pretty flat for me, so. It is what it is. Cheesy little witch thing. Okay, and then we've got this other Uncorked uh, entertainment release here. Another dollar store thing. This is Blood Moon. This came out uh, 2014. A little bit older. This is pretty fun. This is like a werewolf old west sort of crossover thing. Doesn't really work you know, so well with the uh, the period piece Western angle, but still a pretty fun uh, werewolf film. But the werewolf looks stupid here and there. It looks cool elsewhere. Still, cheesy fun time. All right, we've got a steelbook as we move into the Blu-rays. We have Battle Beyond the Stars, Space Opera. Really sick sci-fi film with John Saxon. This uh, steelbook is really, really sick. This is actually the first uh, way I've picked up this film too. Got some cool artwork all the way around. Lots of extras. Uh, Scream Factory did a great job with this. Scream Factory also did a really good job with this the Fly collection on Blu-ray. And we'll just go through and show you guys each one. We have the first one from 58, I believe. Yeah, 1958 with Vincent Price, among others. Really sick artwork. More sick artwork on the uh, the inside there. Show you what's behind the disc. Disc is really cool too. There are just so many extra features on all these as well. Next up we have Return of the Fly. Love that artwork a lot. Easy stuff on the back. Same artwork on the disc as well. Let me turn it over so you guys can see. And then the back art 
He's destroying the laboratory and stuff. All right, then we have The Curse of the Fly, a couple years later, 1965. This is pretty cool cover art too. I wish it was colorized somehow. It's really weird, these films, that the first one is in color and then the sequels are black and white. The, the disc art is the same and then the back art is also the same. She's like in that box sort of deal. Fun stuff. All right, and then of course you have Cronenberg's The Fly from 86, I believe it was. I've seen this one obviously the most. I grew up watching this one a lot. It was on a lot in my house for some reason. And got some cool disc artwork. The disc artwork on this one is the same as the cover. And then the extra, the extra art inside is him, you know, on the ceiling. That's pretty cool. Really sick release overall with this box set. Really happy to own it. And this is just a really, really good franchise too, otherwise. All right, and then The Fly 2, the very last one. And I thought that th this is the first time I actually watched this one. I thought that this one was going to get dialed down a little bit. The discard is the same as well. And then we have the artwork of that giant laboratory. But yeah, this one was really, really crazy still. I, I You know, definitely not quite as good as the first Cronenberg film, but really did not take too big of a step down. Like, this is a really good follow. -up. So if you haven't seen The Fly 2 from 89, I recommend you do and I recommend in order to do it you buy this box set if you can because this is a really really good way to get this series all right back into DVDs guys we have a couple uh, dimension extremes I'll get to that one in a second we have storm warning unrated this movie I thought was gonna be like a little more traditional slashery sort of thing but uh, it ended up being Kind of like a hillbilly, inbred family terrorizing people. Like, not quite as inbred, like, mutant as, uh, say, like, Wrong Turn, but still pretty, pretty incredibly uh, hillbilly-ish. And uh, the gore in this movie is pretty crazy. Some of it's kind of shitty CGI, but, like, the practical effects that are in this movie are really, really good. And uh, there's definitely some really brutal moments, for sure. Enjoyed that. Then we have Black Sheep, unrated. This movie was lots of fun, a lot cheesier and stupid than I could have even imagined, but like it just, it worked really well. There was lots of good kills in it. I mean, what what, do you, what can you expect, man? It's a, it's a movie about a, a herd of killer sheep. So have fun with that if you find that. All right, then we have the 1979 remake of Dracula with Frank Langella and uh, Lawrence Oliver. Uh, this is pretty damn good. Uh, remake as far as I'm concerned. Lots of cool kills and inventive like modern twists on the story. I don't feel that he was a very very good Dracula but it is what it is. Like the movie's shortcomings are definitely made up for in my opinion. This is a solid solid reimagining. We got a Shudder original here. We have Anything for Jackson. This just came out last year 2020. Really like interesting gory psychological dreadful dreadful like uh depressing sort of film i i enjoyed it not as much like it's like it's not exactly my favorite shutter release but still pretty damn good i would definitely recommend it all right we got some trauma here it's not a trauma movie per se they didn't quite make it but they distribute it it's uh trey parker and matt stone's uh cannibal the musical this movie's totally fucking bonkers and if you haven't seen it highly recommend it especially if you're into trauma movies because like i said they didn't make it but it plays just like a fucking trauma movie. This movie is totally wacky and uh, worth your time, in my opinion. Lots of fun. Cannibal the Musical. Then we have got Curse of the Faceless Man from 1958. And uh, this is like a really short, hour-long sci-fi sort of... Uh, I mean, it's not really sci-fi, actually. It's more of like... this. They unearth this, like this like guy that was uh he was covered in like magma and stuff when Pompeii erupted and like now he's coming back to life and stuff a very very cheesy film from the 50s but I had a lot of fun with it classic all right and you know we gotta have at least one new Halloween movie per update uh during October so we have Halloween night from the asylum uh 
2006. This is actually a lot worse than I would have ever imagined. The Asylum can get pretty bad. They have their moments that are decent, but this one's pretty bad. But I had a good enough time with it, you know. I knew what I was getting myself into. It's just a really, really bad slasher, so. Yeah, I'm gonna wrap it up quickly, guys, because I, you know, I've got a lot to do today, but I will see you guys later on tonight with uh, part two. Just stay tuned and uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't, get the notifications and all that. And uh, yeah, take care, guys. I'm gonna wrap this up. Happy October, and I will see you guys later tonight. See ya.